guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video that was inspired by Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life and then Jen from The Book Refuge, and that is chatting about things I dislike in romance novels. There are reasons why some books don't work for me, why I might not like them, why I rate them lower, why they aren't a five-star read, and it was really fun listening to Jen and Crystal chat about their specific preferences. Obviously, I have some similar ones because I feel like there is a consensus about certain things or tropes in books that really, really don't work for us. While some people do like them. Like, I know one of my least favorite tropes is my friend Sam from Sam Reads a Little's favorite tropes to read about, but I feel like it's a very commonly hated trope. But I have some very, very specific things that I'm just like, this is very annoying to me to it's a really big part of the plot that will definitely make me not enjoy the book. So I will go ahead and get to my little list. I've got about seven things. I just want to chat. I mean, it's okay to chat about things you don't like. I typically try to keep my channel pretty positive, but I think it's also important to know what I don't like as a reader. So you know, when you're watching my videos, oh yeah, like I know I don't like that either. So I'd probably like that or not like that book that I'm recommending. So I'd love to know stuff that you hate happen in books and I will go ahead and get to my list. Okay, so the first thing is actually a very specific thing that happens in books that just annoys me. And I don't know why it annoys me so much, but I'm just like, again, really. And I feel like it shows up a lot, not as often anymore, but that is the either super jealous ex that will not go away or every woman is out to get my man and I hate every woman I see. And I really hate the woman hate in some books where literally every female character is trying to get her man and she hates all of them and they're just all really mean and she doesn't have any friends. And so I really hate that. I like it when women can get along and it's a lot of times where like the guy walks into the restaurant and they sit down to eat and like the waitress will start flirting with the guy even though it's obviously a date and I'm like sometimes waitresses are just working like they do not need to hit on the guy because he's just so hot and I hate it when every single female character in the book is trying to get that man and I'm over the jealous ex plot like I don't need it anymore it just seems very easy and just not really well thought out because I'm like okay we have a jealous ex who's trying to break them up and they're over them and then they make you start questioning if he's over her and it's just like been done over and over again and I could care less about the jealous ex but I also don't like it when everybody in the room will turn and stare at them because they're so gorgeous or so hot and they all want to get with them and I'm just like no. <laughs> Realistically, no. Like, that is so annoying, and I hate when that's used as a conflict in books. So, I could do without it, and as when I read a book, it won't make me, like, put it down or automatically drop a star, but I'm just like, mmm, this is not where I want to be going with this plot line, and I would like it if we had better representation of our characters in here, where it's not all just jealous, vindictive women trying to go after the woman's man. The next one, I sent my friend Tori from Novel Life this list, and I was like, let me know if I'm missing anything. And this one, she was like, I laughed at that one because this is like my thing. I don't like excessive epilogues. I don't care when a couple is happy and in love. I feel like I say that all the time. I get so bored. Like if I have a 30 page epilogue of them getting married and having babies and talking, and I was like, I don't care. Like where's my conflict? There's no more conflict. I don't need the rest of this book. Like I don't like it when the couple is just happy and in love and I'm reading about them being happy and in love. I don't care about bonus scenes. I don't care about extended epilogues. I don't care about short stories about them when they're already together madly in love. Like I don't care. I care about the angst and what's ripping them apart. I really don't want to read a book about a couple going out to dinner and then hanging out with friends or a couple trying to figure out where they're going to move or what they're gonna name their baby. I'm like, I don't care. I don't I don't care how many kids you have. Like, I honestly don't care. Like, I just wanna know how you're gonna get over some kind of drama or conflict that happened to you guys and now you're trying to patch your relationship up. Or I care about you trying to figure out how to break up with your boyfriend because you're in love with his brother. Like, I want those conflicts, not happy and in love. I was actually finishing a book on Audible today and I finished the book and then they were like bonus scene and on Audible it doesn't count the book as read in like your stats unless you get to the very end and it was 15 minutes long and that doesn't seem like much but I'm just like let me listen to this 15 minute long bonus scene so that it can count as read on Audible and I was driving so I didn't want to like fast forward through it so I was like annoyed. I was like I don't care like great. They already had two kids and now she's pregnant with twins. 
I literally don't care. So that's just a preference pet peeve of mine that I know many people don't agree with. Like people love signing up for newsletters to get bonus scenes and they love the epilogues. I'm just not interested. So I will go to my next one then going kind of off of that is when the couple gets together too early because like I said I don't like reading about a couple already together and so if they're together before 50% into the book and the rest of the book is them dealing with an external conflict and their romance is okay I get really bored. I don't care about the external conflict. I'm like okay but like our relationship settled. They're madly in love. Why do I care about these people anymore? And so I also tend to have a hard time reading a book series about a couple that it follows that couple the entire book series unless they're torn apart at the end somehow. Like if they're just like good and in love and together and then we get like three books about them, I'm like, I don't care. But if they're going through so many trials and then they're like ripped apart by something at the end of the book, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, give me that tension. Give me that emotion. Rip my couples apart and we'll see how they get back together again. That's what I want in my romance. Like I said, I love angsty romances. I love when they just can't be together. Something's stopping them from being together. It's not the right time for them to be together. I love it. If they're already like, I love you and we're gonna get married at like 50% and I'm just like, why am I here? Like, why am I reading this? This is not a romance anymore. They're already in love. I just don't care anymore. And so I also think that's me uh, as a personal preference. I know a lot of people love reading about couples madly in love and are okay with that and then if it goes to an external conflict they're completely fine but I need the drama and I need the drama for at least like 80% of the book. But don't give me a third act breakup that's annoying. Which will go into my next thing that I really don't like about books. I know miscommunication is like a huge thing that everybody hates and I hate that too and I specifically hate it when this couple has overcome a lot like they don't trust each other and maybe they were enemies to lovers and then the miscommunication happens where they hear something about the other person don't sit down and talk about it with them and address it and say, oh my gosh, I knew I could never trust you. And it throws out the like 50% of the book where they were building that trust and communicating and trusting in one another. They literally just obliterate everything, all the growth that we got. And we're just like, well, you're just like who I thought you were at the very beginning of the book. And I knew I could never trust you. And I'm like, why did I just read all this time of you guys getting to know each other having depth in your communication, having depth in your relationship, understanding each other, and now that all just goes out the window and it makes me so annoyed. And the fact that it's always about something that is like a rumor or something that is not who they are and we as a reader know it's not who they are and the person should know that's not who they are and then they're just like, oh, of course, and they don't talk to them about it. And they're like, hey, did you actually like cheat me out of this thing before? They don't ask that. They're like, oh my gosh, of course they would. And they storm off and don't talk to them and that's the third act breakup. And I appreciate it when there's not a third act breakup. And even though I said I don't like them when they're like madly in love, but the, the third act breakup can be feel sometimes very formulaic, especially when it's a miscommunication and then they don't talk about it. And then that causes them to have to like have their final culminating, like let's figure out how we're gonna be together kind of thing. So if it's a miscommunication and then they don't, and it's always like about a rumor or something they think about someone and they don't actually address it with one another, I get so, so annoyed, especially when they're like, I knew I could never trust you. Or it's like, they see like a text from a girl and it, they completely misconstrue the situation or they see them like hugging an ex of theirs and they're like, of course he would cheat on me and go back to her. Like I knew I could never trust him. And it like is nothing to do with that whatsoever. But they never go up and say like, hey, what were you doing with your ex? They don't ask that. And it's just so annoying when they just don't talk to each other. And I know it's for the sake of the plot. And that's why it also kind of feels lazy because it's like that's just such an easy way to break up a couple and a very annoying way that I <laughs> get very annoyed with. So definitely miscommunication where they just don't talk it out and jump to assumptions that don't make sense with everything they've learned about that person. The next one actually I figured out something I do like about this trope kind of. So the next one's accidental pregnancy. I know a lot of us really don't like accidental pregnancy. The last one I read was Melanie Harlow and I think it was Taste and I would love to know when it's an accidental pregnancy because then I don't want it because it has the same again like convenient kind of lazy plots that just I'm like well obviously this was where it was going and so I don't like it when the couple is like kind of together kind of not and then the girl gets pregnant and then it's like well you only want to be with me because I'm pregnant and then the guy has to like show that he really loves her not just because she's pregnant with his baby but because he wants to be with her and like that just like is so cliche and overdone and obvious and I hate it when I'm like well I guess that could be coming and so I hate it when that's the plot and then they break up because she's like you only want me for the baby you don't want me 
me and then she's like I don't want to feel him to feel obligated to be with me and like that's always the drama and I don't like that especially when it's super early on or even when it's in the end like I don't care and of course I feel like everyone talks about this but like when you can see the obvious signs and they're always like oh I had the flu so I was on my antibiotics and that like counteracted my birth control or wow I keep on throwing up and I'm just like this is so annoying and it's just like so cliche it's done over and over again to the point where like okay I see what's coming and I'm really annoyed but I figured out because what was I reading what one of them is bloody heart by Sophie Lark but there was another one I was reading that I was like I don't mind when it's a secret baby and they hide it for years because then it kind of turns into a single parent romance and I really like it I think it was it a Devney Perry I feel like it was yeah tattered by Devney Perry was where she they had a one-night stand and she got pregnant but they never like exchanged information so she could never find him again and now he's back in town like 10 years later and he figures out he has a daughter like I really enjoy that because then they do have to work out their problems and it's more like co-parenting like they have to get close to the kid and see if the kid likes them that feels much more single parent to me so I don't mind when it's a we hooked up I got pregnant you never knew and now I have like an eight-year-old and we have a child together I really like that bloody heart by Sophie Lark did that because it adds to the angst I love maybe I'll do a video about my favorite tropes because I love a good time jump like the kingmaker has that where it's never the right time for us to be together so we have to wait years it just adds to the angst and so I love it when it's she also had a baby and you didn't know about it. I love that, but it's just because I love the single parent trope too, but do not give me a, I'm pregnant, what are you going to do about it? Oh, I want to marry you. No, you only want to marry me because I'm pregnant. Yeah, I can't be with you. And like, because that's also kind of like the miscommunication, the kind of all blend together. I don't like it. The next two I have have to do the age gaps because of the specific books that I've read. So the first one, well, they both actually are in torn by Carrie and Cole which is why I personally didn't love that book and the first one is when the heroine in an age gap where it is a younger heroine acts very immature and acts very much like a teenager so if we have like don't kiss the bride by Carrie and Cole I think was so well done because the heroine while she was 18 she was very mature for her age because of everything that she went through and I totally believe that she would be with like a 32 year old like their dynamics worked really well but for Torn and why I just did not love Unconditional by Kibi Tyler was because the heroine was like 17 and acted very much like a teenager and I was just like I can't see why this guy would even want to be in a relationship with you you're just acting bratty and immature and I can't stand you and I cannot forget the fact that you're a teenager and you feel very young and I don't like that when it's an age gap because then it's hard for me to believe in the relationship I much prefer a more mature heroine and that's why she would be with someone who was older as opposed to you're just a child and <laughs> should not be an adult relationship and so I feel like both of those books I just did not like the heroines and how immature they acted and that's why I did not love the romance but I also don't love it with both of those had where the hero helps raise her and knows her from a very young age I was like you knew her when she was five yet and you were an adult when she was five and you then want to date her when she's like 17 18 like that that is just so hard for me to get over and so in torn by Carrie and Cole he was like her uncle he was her dad's best friend granted they were like 16 when she was born but I'm like you literally helped change her diapers and now you're gonna fall in love with her when you were old enough to be her dad like technically so it was only 16 years but like I don't like it when they knew each other beforehand and that's the same with unconditional he helped raise her because something had happened and he was one of the police officers to find her when her parents died and he helped raise her from it being a toddler now I didn't mind love unexpected because she was in elementary school when he started dating her mom but she never liked him and never saw him as a father and I guess in unconditional and in torn they like never saw them as a parental figure but they were still around as a parental figure like they're one of their only parental figures especially an unconditional and I didn't like it and I was just like you literally knew this person when they were like five and now you're liking them romantically like I don't I can't I can't get over that so I have a really hard time with books like that I love age gaps but if the heroine's way too mature and acts like a child or the hero knew her from when she was really young it's really hard for me to read but like birthday girl like yeah he's her boyfriend's dad so he's old enough to be her 
dad. They didn't meet until she was in her 20s or like 19 and so I felt like that was much more believable as a romance than if he had known her like while she was growing up and seeing that. I just can't, I can't get over that. Okay, so the last one is like preferential towards genre and that's like a super, super, super alpha hero that just walks all over the heroine. I am fine with this in mafia romance and historical romances and probably like fantasy romances but put it in a contemporary and I'm like, you are not attractive whatsoever to me. That happened in the Coppersmith Farmhouse by Debney Perry. That's a small town contemporary romance and the hero was so alpha and would just like walk all over the heroine, demand things of her, and she like didn't really put up a fight with any of it and I'm just like he is so not attracted to me in the way that he is just like dominates the relationship and demands things of her and I really don't like it. But if he's like a mafia boss and doing that, I'm okay with that. If he is like this duke or this highlander doing that, I'm okay with it. Give me all the alpha heroes. But if it's a contemporary romance, I feel like it's just a different situation to me and I really don't like it because I just like don't like that kind of person in real life. But if it's in a fictional, fictional setting like mafia and historical are, I'm totally okay with it. But I don't know what it is. But if it's in a contemporary romance, I just really don't like the super alpha hero. But... In the other genres, it's fine. Let me know if I'm the only one. Like, are you okay with super, super alpha heroes in a contemporary? Or are you like me where you need it in your subgenres but, like, can't take it in contemporary? Or if there's any other, like, tropes or things that happen in romances, like, you're okay with it in one genre but not in another? I'd love to hear that. I don't know why I feel that way, but, like, I remember reading the Debney Perry and I was like, this is so not attractive to me. But, like, I read that all the time in historicals and I just eat it up. So, let me know. But those are the main things that I do not love in my romances and will cause me to not enjoy them or give them a lower rating. Let me know your favorite tropes or least favorite tropes. What is something that could happen in a romance that immediately makes you not like it? I know cheating will come up for some people. I personally am okay with cheating as long as it is done with a purpose. So like if the hero's in a relationship because he's trying to deny his feelings for the heroine and then cheats on the person he's with with the heroine, like I can see why that's happening. I do not condone cheating in real life and that's like something that's completely unforgivable to me but in a romance I can see it or like I know forget me not by QB Tyler people hate the cheating in there but it was at a very dark and broken time in their relationship and he does have to make up for it so I feel like and that's really the only one that I've liked where they actually cheated on the love interest but typically if cheating is done for a purpose I can I can accept it in a romance, but I know that's sometimes like a really hard no for people. So let me know your hates in romances. I'd love to hear. And that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.